sheet, which has got some yellow and some blue. So you got one that comes in the bottom of that tank, and, and the yellow goes all the way to the top. That, that's how much water, if the tank is all the way full, that's how much water you've got in the tank. Okay? It's about a million gallons. Water comes in the bottom, and then it goes out the bottom. Right? So at night, that water in the summertime will get hot because it's sitting in there, you're, you've got a million gallons in there, and, and you're only using 400,000 gallons a day. So you've got 100,000 gallons in the other tank. So then if you if you're turn your whole system over that day, you're only gonna pull 300,000 gallons of water out of that tank, right? So I'm representing that by the blue, about the bottom third of the tank is about 300,000 gallons. So then that means in that given day, the water in yellow doesn't, leave the tank it just sits in there right so but it, but you need that height you need that column of water because of the pressure so what happens is that water comes in the bottom and it, it doesn't blend well it gets hot in there and it stratifies so cool water goes to the bottom the warm water stays on top <clears throat> so when the water comes and goes out of the tank it, it, it stratifies just like a lake will Right, so if you've got a big deep water lake, you know the water it stratifies. You've got water on the bottom that that stays covered. Right, <clears throat> that's what happens in that tank because you only you're not using all the water out of it every day. Now it's not really possible to use it all out of it every day because of the hydraulics out of your other tank. When your other tank goes to the bottom, then that's the lowest spot in your system then if, if, if the water goes below that elevation, then you start losing pressure somewhere, probably, right? Yeah. Right. <clears throat> and so, so you don't, the water in that tank that is below that elevation, in this tank, is just storage. But it, it doesn't, doesn't really provide any pressure, doesn't provide any service to you. So what happens then is, as that water gets hot, it's staying in the tank, the, water, the chlorine in it decays and it, it goes away over time, um, especially with the heat in the summertime. When it gets really hot, chlorine goes away quicker. <clears throat> and so overnight, sometimes if you get water that comes into it, that tank will turn over in the middle of the night and then you'll get a slug of water that comes into your system with no chlorine in it. And so then we see that out in the system sometimes and that's why we have to flush and, and keep chlorine residuals at a certain minimum throughout the system. That's why you have to flush and do that, is your, your chlorine decays over time. Well, if you get a slug of water that comes in your tank that, that, is, that it has very low chlorine, by the time it gets to the end of your water lines and to, to, to meet the customer, if you've got a long dead end line, for example, it's, it ages and it could be very low quality by the time it gets to the house, right? So the excess storage then can be a problem for you. And that's why a lot of utilities then over the course of time are considering doing things like this, which is reducing some storage. And but you you really you don't want storage above and beyond your demand. Right? Because then it, it's going to age in your system. It's going to increase the likelihood of you getting uncoordinated water sucked into your system over time. Um, and that, that is really the source of poor water quality is, is in the, from the tank. Now a lot of people do the mixing systems. They try to do that. Mixing systems, the, the, there's only a few that are really effective that really actually mix tanks. On this tank this big with only 300,000 gallons a day coming in and out of that tank, if you've got 100 coming from the other, you're never going to maintain this with a mixing system well enough to actually maintain high water quality. It's too much water with, with your overall demand. So you, you, you're gonna have, in that situation, if you don't treat any water, you're gonna have two days of, of water storage there if you can get it all out. The problem is once you get down to a certain elevation, I don't know what that is, in this tank it probably doesn't come out. Uh, it's around 68 feet or so. Yeah, which is controlled by your, your ground elevation outside of your tank. So that, that below that number and down doesn't do you any good. It doesn't provide you any system pressure. It doesn't, you know, you're, you, it's only limited fire protection. Right? So, the, so what 
systems are seen um, is that the the risk of getting a slug of bad water coming into your system is greater than the benefit of having that benefit of the fire protection there. So what happens is in fires, what, what we like to see is fire departments being in contact with the water plant so that the water plant's aware of when there's a fire so that they can, they can amp up their pumps to maintain water elevations. That's more important for the overall citizen um, than, than just having water stored at elevation. The, the because of the water quality risk. And, and I, I'm trying to think of a clean way to, to, to communicate that, and that's about the best way to, to say it. I know that, that that's what we prefer, or I prefer. Uh, the next slide is what you're trying to go to, which is we want to take the water from the bottom and move it to the top, and we want to eliminate excess storage at, at, so that you end up with about a 400,000 uh, gallon uh, volume of water stored, but you don't want that that 68 feet at the bottom doesn't do you any good. We want to move all the water as high as we can, so that then the tanks go up and down together, and you don't have the uh, water aging that doesn't do you any good below that that 30. I, I got 32 feet from the top, which is the 68 foot number that he's talking about. So it's a 100 foot tank, 100 foot tall tank. So we're looking at about eliminating the bottom two-thirds of water in it. So, um, and I'm taking notes and trying to follow and forgive yeah. my ignorance of it um, and just learning all this process and mm -hmm. trying to come on board. So did you say that the bottom has to, to have, as it is now, has to remain full for the pressure to move the water? Why? So, yeah. My question is why can't the top remain empty? Explain that to me in layman's terms. Why yeah, can't that I know, remain empty? Yeah, that's hard to explain. And yeah. that's why, I, and I, it sounds like a stutter sometimes because it, it is kind of hard to explain. But, um, you know, th think of a water hose, you know, and if you, you just take the hose, if you raise this end up, water comes out of this, mm -hmm. right? So that's what, that's kind of what happens in, inside of the water system too, right? So you're not going to have water coming out of the hose on this end unless this water is elevated above it, right? So if you can move that higher, then you get more pressure. And so the water in the bottom of this, so if you take that water hose and you've got water coming out and you lower this, and the water no longer comes out of this, that's the water in the bottom half of the tank. It's not, it's not high enough to push water into the, into the system. It's gravity fit to create that pressure, right? R correct, yeah. right. So just think of a simple hose and look at it like that. I mean, um, you know, like I said, to repeat myself with, for clarity, if you take that hose and you've got water coming out and you just lower it, you know, water's going to stop and they're going to equalize. Well, that's the bottom half of the tank. So then hydraulically, what happens is the water doesn't come into the top of the tank, right? And even if it does, if the water in the tank's hot, um, it's going to come to the bottom, like a lake would. Mm -hmm. If you drop water, cold water, and it, it's going to go to the bottom, stratifies. And so, what you end up with is this column of water at the top of the tank that just moves up and down that's sitting on top of the water you're actually using. But that water that's sitting on top of it just ages up. It just, the chlorine decays. Chlorine, I mean, it decays with time based on your water quality. And why, again, did you say mixing systems were not effective? But it, for this particular tank, a mixing system doesn't benefit you because it's such a great volume of water and your demand is so low. So in, in essence, you're just stirring warm water around is all you're doing. So you're, you're stirring water that's, that's lost its chlorine, you're just stirring it up if you, if you do have a mixing system. And, and then too, it depends on the effectiveness of the mixing system. So in this case, the mixing system you all, you all have in that tank is only mixing the top really half of the water. Right? So if you draw a line halfway across that tank, that top half, you're stirring just warm water. You're not even getting into that mixing zone. So when the water's coming into the bottom, you, you've got cold water coming into the tank and it moves up, up the tank and you've got this hot water on top of it, you're going to get a little bit of blending right there, but the, the stratification line is going to be about 18 inches. Right? And then inside of that, yeah, it's going to be trying to mix, but then it, it, it's not going to mix on up in the tank. 
So then even if you stir the top, which is what you all have in there, even if you stir the top, it's not going to penetrate that layer because of the density difference. And so looking at a lot of mixing systems, the only way that that's really effective in mixing system is that true bringing in all the way to the top, bringing it in the middle, and then only bringing it out in the bottom. Some of those systems work well, but at this volume, it's just tough to do. So historically, and again, I feel like I'm catching up. Why was it built to this scale? Why was it built this big? Well, that's why um, I started talking about regulations changing and things like that. There was a period where we were concerned about fire more than anything I else. I think that was about the time around the Paxton and Ball fire, I do believe, when that thing right. got established and, 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 and they you know, kind of went off of that. You're not the only one. I mean, a lot of communities did that. And, and um, you just oversize the tank because you think, Lord, we got to have water. Well, then when you have an E. coli outbreak in Missouri and Minnesota and you have different issues, then the EPA says, well, you got to have maintained chlorine. Well, now this is a problem for chlorine which is an indicator for bacteria, bacteria growth in your water system, right? Um, and that, and that, that's just one of the things you, you look at is, chlor but chlorine is your key indicator. I mean, that's why we measure for it every day, continuously. Curious, if it's a million gallon tank and you're cutting it down to a third, is that even gonna meet our demand? Well, it cuts down, but when you get to, I, I'm using thirds just for round numbers. Yeah, so what, what we're required to do is we do a, so the rules that guide you on what your storage have to be, you want a 24 hour storage. So if your demand's 400,000 gallons a day, we know we want at least 24, we want that much volume of water at elevation, right? And so that, that when I'm saying at elevation, you want the, the last, gallon to also come out of the hat cause a gallon to come out somewhere else so you want your water hose above that elevation that last 400,000 gallon right so you want 24 hours of storage and keeping that other tank which we would want you to do if you reduce this one to 400,000 gallons plus or minus based on the radius of how they do the inside um, it, it, if you get 400,000 gallons there and you still have your 100,000 gallons, it's a balance of, for growth. And also, you've got a little bit more than 24 hours, but it's a reasonable amount more than 24 hours that'll give you a little bit of, of protection against fires, a little bit extra protect, protection if that's still a concern. But also, it gives you an amount that's reasonable enough that you can, you know, you, you can maintain a, a good turnover. If you do this tank the way it is, and do the, the come out at the top uh, mixing, the tide flex mixing system, for example, is what we would propose, which is basically just a pipe. It's real simple, it's mechanical, it doesn't use any power, it's maintenance free long term, um, it's just plumbing. It, you, you, it's, a, it's a rubber gasket that uh, just the water comes out and it pushes the gasket open, and then when it closes, when, when, there's, when the pumps are off, it just closes. Then the water in the bottom's got just a regular check valve. The water just comes straight back into the system, right? So there's nothing mechanical to it. Um, we've got had 35 years of good luck with them in systems that we've looked at. And and so what happens is it's just a maintenance free. It's just water comes in, comes out the bottom. It it then inherently mixes. Plus, in a 400,000 gallon scenario like that, you're going to get all your turnover every day anyway which so, is what you want. But what if we have growth? That's my uh, question was, in itself. Yeah. Business, right. e economically, and housing. <laughs> I mean, that's two of the biggest things that mm -hmm. I'd like to hear so, about. So that's a great point. What we would suggest is if you actually had growth that warranted 250,000 gallon a day tank, this water that you have at the bottom of this tank isn't helping with that because it doesn't contribute to pressure. Right. It, once you get below that 68 feet to get that water out, you're going to have to have a hydrant right there at the tank. Is that fair? Pretty much. Yeah. I mean, you're going to have some really low elevation hydrants that you can pull water from, uh, but that bottom two thirds of that water doesn't help pressure. So even though it's in the tank, it's an illusion. Is that because of the other tank? 
No, it's because of just the hydraulics. Okay. You know, it, the elevation of your homes are higher than that, right? So it just doesn't, it can't, it can't get out unless you open a hydrant or, or a service that is well below that in elevation, which I don't know how many you have. But I, you know, you can go look at the tank. Mm -hmm. There's some homes right here in the main part of town that, that, uh, that could probably get a little service off of it, mm -hmm. but it's going to go, you're going to lose, start to lose pressure on second floors for sure. Second floor bathrooms, you'll lose pressure. Um, so if you, if you do have rural growth that warrants 200,000 gallons or 300,000 gallons, you're going to have to increase the size of the tank somewhere else at that elevation though. You could the water, we could run our pumps along the you, Yeah, right. You've got a lot of play in, in... Instead of running our pumps, say, 8 or 12 hours a day like we're doing, if the demand increases, then we can run our pumps 18 hours a day, Correct. 20 hours a day. Right. You know, yeah, there's different water ways to longer. the demand, yeah. So how much water do we make right now? Around 400 to 450. And that's not operating 24 hours though, right? No, that's about 13 to 14 hours a day. So if you were 24 hours, would that conceivably double? Uh, yes. Now I will say this too, we and I were talking about water loss is pretty high right now too, not just in Hartford. Uh, you know, it, it's been the nature of the weather we've had over the last few years. There are a lot of water systems your, your loss is about 10% higher than what it traditionally is right now. And that's what I've seen. So, you know, pulling back about 10% of that over the next year, you're going to end up at about 400,000 gallons. So in your, in your own opinion, is this, is this something that is a desired need or in your, in your eyes, is that, is that a desired need to be done? No, it's not desired. It's it's something that you, you got to look at what your risks are and what your benefits are. Because I requested right. the environmental service sheets to go over, and I'm trying to learn it all. Still trying to learn it, mm -hmm. and it looked like there was an issue back in 2019, mm -hmm. and it was in the red for the most part. And it's since then it looks like we've been in the clear mm -hmm. on our levels. So that's, that was my questioning on if this was a need that needed to be provided, if we're still meeting the standards of basically just getting out of the red. If, you, if, you, if you're meeting your standards in the short term, it, it's, there's several. So the reason I mentioned that about the water loss right now right. is you're not having to flush as much right now to maintain your water quality, for example. right? So. When, when you're talking about desired, I, I don't look, you don't look, I'm not looking at it like desired or not desired. I'm looking at it as necessary, risk, what's unnecessary, right? And so benefit to the system, there's no benefit to having water in the bottom two thirds of the tank. Right. There is risk in having water, that excess volume there, because it does age and you can get um, a slug of bad water that enters your system. That's reflected in those numbers. <coughs> so I guess how often do we flush that tank? Uh, we normally flush every quarter, and we usually flush <coughs> around 350,000 gallons during that period. Right. So it's a whole day's worth of production. Yes. yes. Yeah. So, so there. That's a perfect example. So, things like that you don't want to have to do. Right. Right. Um, it's it's hard to under it's hard to acknowledge. I agree because it's a tank that you build, right? Right. But that bottom two thirds of water doesn't provide any pressure. It doesn't provide. It's 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 water holding up the water that's that's contributing to pressure, right? But there's a risk with it. Uh -huh. And now now it may never cause a problem. <coughs> it could though. So another question. Would you uh, increase the strengthening of that tank, and what kind of liability issues would that be on these repairs that's being yeah. out? Yeah. So, so to to fix the tank to reduce the water, you've seen um, some of those fluted tanks with a big concrete bowl on top of them. So you'll see, you know, looks right. So basically, what you're going to do is go in with the ribs on the inside of it. You'll pull up 
they'll, 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 it's a big tank, so you're going to want to have a garage door in it. So, so they would put a garage door in it, and physically they they would pull sheet piles up in it and then weld that to the perimeter. So then you would end up with a basically what's called a fluted column tank. Then the bowl would go up in four pieces or eight on the inside, and it would just sit up there just like a regular tank would. Um, it's easy. To, it's I say that I ain't going to be able to do it. Right. You know. But the companies that are in that business, it's not a complicated project for them, per se. It, 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 it you know, you think about it like it is, and, and you do have to do the, the engineering, you do have to do the math on the structure, but it's, it's, you basically just pull up sheet piles on the inside, weld it to the perimeter, you seal weld everything, so it's just like a, a round leg on a round tank. So the other tank down the street, it's got round legs on it. The inside of those legs have been seal welded for ever how long the tank's been there. Right, so the inside of that fluted, those fluted columns will be exactly the same. So we'll put those on the inside, you'll strip it, paint it, right? And then it's just like any other metal See, structure. See, we, we repaired it three years ago and it got painted and all yeah. that, and put the mixture and everything in. And that was a $300,000 project. Yeah, that's about and, what it takes to paint. And so, I mean, I get all these, and I appreciate you coming. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. um, but I just it's a hard it's a hard thing to swallow when we're talking numbers like this. It is. It's a big number. And, um, and I don't even know the number. Um, have you got a number? Um, it's like six hundred, right at six hundred thousand dollars. I think. So what do you have that report? I can't remember. I'm talking about. I thought it was four ninety. Yeah, the, the total, everything. Yeah, the construction should be somewhere between four and five. When you when you get done, but but that um, it's a big number. There's no question. But you do it. You know you got to start thinking about also making the system function correctly, and that water doesn't doesn't help you. It only risks. So is this right. all that you specialize in, and is just in the tanks itself, or what? What do you? I'm an engineer. I've done. So everything. you do every I'm, every bit I'm, of it. I, no, I. I'm, on the water level sides of things, on engineering. I, in terms of what's my profession, yeah, yeah I'm a civil engineer, professional engineer, licensed in a couple of states, Tennessee, Kentucky. I've practiced in more than one, okay. uh, three. But he's not the only engineer on this. Correct, project. right. He's right. called somebody else in. Right. That does tanks. Right. So the, you, you, you would take the, the project documents. What we do is create project documents that we can advertise and get pricing on consistent with what the state requires and then because we before you can change the tank you have to have engineer drawings to go to the state so that's what I do process that then you hire a contractor to implement what is contained in those those drawings and those those contract talk, talk about your other helper uh, yeah Jay has been in the tank business for 40 years um, I, that's all he's ever done uh, right. I've done forensics on tanks. I've done um, new tanks. Uh, we maintain tanks. Uh, you know, it's it. There is a. I will say this. There is an art to it. It's it's a specialized trade that that there, there's very true. You just don't want inexperienced people dealing with tanks. Right. Um, so the chlorine loss. Getting back to yep. is a primary issue, right? That's the easiest thing to point to. Okay, right. and you're saying that that's m the majority that we're seeing in the loss is on these long dead end lines. You'll see you'll you'll see the same result you'll have on a long dead end line is happening in that tank. Okay, so but the but the residents who are experiencing the chlorine loss when they open their tap if, if, that are at risk. I mean, if you Correct. live right next, to, I live right next to the tank. Okay, right. to the tower. Yep. Am I going to have much risk of that, or is that somebody who lives way out on a dead end line going to have bigger risk? It, it there's no necessarily a, a bigger risk or, or less per se. It depends on how your hydraulics are, as the water leaves the tank, what direction does it go, and time then in your main line too. So it just depends on where it comes out and what it is. It could be you, it could be you know down your system. You know, um, there's some systems that have hold times of 30 days. You know, so it just depends on how how long it takes for your system to clean itself out. Well, because where I'm kind of going is I know that there had been some progress in the last few years laying new lines where we basically said yeah. no more dead end. And if it were dead end, we'd have to have a blow off, right? 
Yes. And then we're trying to kind of get a circulating system Thank set you. up. Okay. So I guess my, I mean, I guess my question kind of building on what Bo is saying is he's seeing the levels getting better since over the last few years yeah. that we've implemented mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Is that a result of that? Is that a result of something different? It's quite okay. a result of all of it. If I was even just be beginning, it's, it's a, for, for you to maintain a high water quality, you have to flush. You have to have the lack of dead end lines. You have to have good turnovers. Taking samples than they were back then. Yeah, you have so, to have good turnover. You have to have all, all those elements. You have to think about if you're going to maintain water quality. The problem for you is, is that the regulation is much different now, and it's it's not going to get less. So things like that are things systems are trying to figure out how to deal with. I know it would be like remotely way more expensive, but and you and I already heard you say that you would recommend keeping that tank. But what, just a ballpark, what would it be to build a smaller tank, I guess, to accommodate it, that? This is the cheaper option. That is the cheaper option. Yeah. 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 You don't have any site work to do. You don't have elevated any. tank is about $2 a gallon for okay. the standpipe is about $1 a gallon. Yeah. Yeah. Right, off, right off the bat, you, you, you don't have to do site work. You don't have to do any yard work to get the water, the water line to a new tank. You don't have to build a foundation for a new tank. If you tear this down, you, you're going to, you know, just right. to, you're still going to have to do a lot of work that, that you don't have to do. This is a solution. They'll, they'll go in, they'll take the bottom out, they'll put a concrete slab down, then they'll build straight off that concrete slab. I have a question, sir. Or a, yes. kind of a two-part question. Uh, I know you said it took about a day's production whenever we flush those tanks. Yes. So do we know, like, what that cost is whenever you flush? What? It costs about a dollar eighty per thousand a gallon. Right, so a dollar eighty per gallon. Per thousand. Per thousand. Yes. Okay. And then, is there a way to flush whenever you do flush it? Is it flush back into our system, where it just kind of like recycles that water, or is it just it, it just lost. Into, it just it just lost into ditches, creeks. Mm -hmm. So, is there any way that? The system could be where it would recycle whenever we flush that system. Could it no, recycle you, you wouldn't want to because it would just recycle any of the dead water, any contaminants back into the system again. So when you lose chlorine, the the odds of bacteria growth go up. So if you get a bac the only way to get rid of it is flush it out and then add chlorine back to it and cleanse that and and bleach it out basically, right? So if you have a dead dead end line, trying to flush that. Your only option is to pull that bad water out and pull chlorine back into it, which then resanitizes that line on the inside. Right. Thank you. Yes. Sir. Uh, following up on your, I have several questions, but following up with your line of thought, if we're dumping the water back out into the streams or whatever, and we're bringing the water from said stream, yes. then we're going to have to decontaminate all that anyway. So, what's the difference of emptying out the tank and decontaminating it, requiring it, putting it back in there. I mean, that mm -hmm. I'm following his line of thinking. That's just silly, dumping it out there and then bring it back in some dirtier water. Yeah. Well, I mean, you want to remove any of the contaminants in the water. You want to flush it out, bring new water in. I understand that, but that's not answering my question. Why why are we not taking the water that was in the tank and putting it through there versus taking it from the river somewhere? Mm -hmm. What well, hydraulically number one you gotta build some system to pump it and then then you have to build, you would have to build a system to transport it all the way back to the plant. Yes. So so you would have to move it from the tank side to the headworks and then to retreat it. Right. Uh, um, it would have to go through at least two stages of this treatment plant mm -hmm. to be able to get it back to the water quality it is as it's leaving the plant. I'd like to see the cost analysis on that at some point. Um, getting to the point that I know chlorine is 1.5 times heavier than water. So the chlorine is, like you said, is staying in the bottom half, the upper half gets heated and the chlorine disintegrates. It decays. Okay. But if we're bringing in new water, then it's just going to rise up. So if we're bringing in new chlorinated water to, to raise the bad water up, then where is this idea of the bad sludge coming through? If the bad water is on top and it comes from the bottom, how is the bad water suddenly 
transfer through the good water to get that sludge through. That doesn't make sense either. Well, at night, so what, you know, during the day it's 100 degrees and the temperature at night is down around 70, you know, in the summertime. So, and then in times of the year, just like your lake turns over, you know how a lake will turn over? That water tank will do the same thing. So it's all about temperature variation for that day. It stratifies if you've got a hot column of water, it's aged, the right temperature happens, the correct temperature exchange happens for that night, and then it, it, it will inherently mix when it so does it that. it does mix, so the chlorine and the bad water does mix, so you want to have that stratification, so I'm getting mixed uh, no. terminology here. Yeah, I, I, understand, I understand your logic, but when it mixes like that, you have the, the risk is that you have no chlorine with water that's been in there for two weeks with no chlorine that is now building bacteria that has then positive bacteria that enters your drinking water supply, which can cause the issues that other systems have seen that's caused the state to, to react to say, you're gonna flush this water, you're gonna maintain a minimum chlorine level, you're gonna do these things. The state requires the water systems uh, because it does provide the layer of safety for the public. And so the has only the, way to overcome that is to... Has the Department for Environmental uh, Water Division come out here and tested the water to verify your findings? Uh, it's They don't do that. It's his job to maintain that water quality yes. test. They're not going to come out there. They're going to look at his records, which is why but you've got a lab, certified lab. Yes, we have a certified lab. Right, that does that. If... Uh, if if I heard correctly, three hundred fifty thousand dollars a few years ago, I think uh, was said two thousand nineteen, would uh, purchased an agitator to mix the water and the chlorine. Mm -hmm. uh, who who approved that? If the system that you paid three hundred fifty thousand dollars for is not doing a quality job enough to keep it mixed, who who didn't who didn't follow through doing the research to see if it could not mix that kind of water. I, I can't answer that. I don't know. Well, I would like to know who did that. To if it's not going to do an efficient job, then it should never have been purchased in order to spend another six hundred thousand dollars for a device that shouldn't be there. Well, what I would I would argue also is that the tank being built in the way that it was, looking at the system's demand the way that it was, set you up. The original decision to build the tank the way it was is what set you up for where you're at today. The, the, a while it was done in good faith, and I would argue that any council member that voted to build that tank did the best they could with the information they had at the time. Same thing for the people that voted probably to put the mixing system in. They did the best with the information they had at the time. And it'd be the same people here today that would be voting as best they know on this as well. So I'm not having great confidence in this. Well, and, and it's a fair assertion, but uh, again, that's why the regulations have changed. They're much different now than when that tank was built, which is why I said that about the best decision you can at the time that you make it. And again, there's a risk with having that much water in the tank. It does you no good pressure-wise. It's not going to help you in a fire, per se. The bigger uh, benefit in a fire is making sure that he can turn his pumps on. Mm -hmm. So the fire department having a good relationship with you is critical in a fire. Critical. Just worst case scenario, yes. something happens. Electricity goes out, we have another uh, devastating yeah. situation that comes through that just came through last last month. It comes through and we need, well, in December, it comes through and we need that extra water. Mm -hmm. And power goes out. It's and not we're not gonna have that there. And not to mention, if we, if we have growth in our community, which someday I hope we will, they're going to have to either build another one or uh, discombobulate what you've already put in this time. It's I just don't see the reason to spend this kind of money for something that apparently doesn't seem to be broken. How, how old is that uh, stamp? The other water tower? I forget the exact year. I'm um, not exactly sure of the year. It was, you know, it, was it was there when I was a kid. And that's. 75 years ago. When you look up and you see that water at a high elevation and you see a lot of tanks that, that are like that. And there used to be two of them. Mars, but that's the, the reason you build that at that elevation is because that works long term. Water at elevation works long term. 
water in a standpipe, you know, we're, I'm getting ready to tear another standpipe down right now because that, that so you can have a standpipe that says, oh, it's a 100,000 gallon standpipe, but the pressure in the west end of the county where, the, where we're tearing this down, if, if you lose 30 feet of water out of that 120 foot tank, you lose pressure. So that tank is useless. It does no good. So we're, we're artificially lowering the level. If you, all right. No, we're trying, we're trying to maintain. I, I, I understand. Okay. I'm, we're trying to maintain water at a higher elevation and eliminate water that will put you at risk <coughs> from a water quality perspective at a lower elevation that doesn't help you. I, I'm, excuse my ignorance, I'm not an engineer. But if you got a, a, a device of this, this large, and you need this part for pressure, but you cut it in half and you're saying, well, if the water goes down to this part, then this provides no pressure, mm -hmm. but yet you want to cap it there. How's that causing pressure? When you said when it drops, it's causing no pressure. We don't want water below that line. But you're making that line. Correct, we're making the so line. So how's that going to cause pressure, whereas at the top, of the water came down to that level and you say well now we don't have any pressure but if we cap it there suddenly now there's pressure that doesn't make sense the water's not going to be below that we're going to put the water above it so you're you're talking about uh, so, so we're going to take that tank that that is there the, the other smaller tank so the water is going to be below the shelf we're going to do i mean water, above it correct okay yeah. we're going to well, duplicate we're going that's okay we're, we're going to do it's, it's you know it's illogical on its face because you see all this water stored and, and it seems like well that's water stored but it's hydraulics that that the the elevation of the water in the tank matters to the ground elevation and oh, i understand and, that and, and, and so then the water below that elevation doesn't push water above this elevation well, when i was looking over the gentleman's shoulder there to look, i'm trying to look at the chart and the blue was below the yellow so Correct. That's, that's what I was looking at. You, the water you're storing is below the shelf and not above it. Well, and this 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 image is is what I was trying to do to demonstrate what happens now. So so what happens now is the whole tank, the entire tank is full. So you end up with this big column of water that's just a, a weight that's sitting on top of the other water that's going up and down. So your pressure is being driven by this warm column of water that's sitting on top of the water that he's pushing in and out of the tank at the bottom. Good way to look at that if you go up there and look at the tank, if you look at look at where mold is on the tank, right? If you go uh, go look at your your other tank that's elevated, if you look up underneath it, you'll start to see a little bit of black mold under there. Well, that's because there's cold water there. That cold water means that there's probably chlorine in that water. If you go look at your standpipe, this tank, you'll see no mold anywhere on it. Well, that means that it's probably warm. But if you go look around the back side of it, that bottom, there's a little area over there that's about a foot high that's got a little bit of mold on it. Is that right? Yes. And that that is indicative that your water is coming in the bottom and it's not mixing. You, well, you know, if the tank is mixing, you should have molds, mold over the course of time that goes all the way up the tank or all the way up your normal operating range for the tank. And you don't see any of that. Well, wouldn't that be... Uh sunlight versus shadow no not not with a water tank not like that it 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 uh you will get mowed on the outside of the tank because it will sweat and it's just in that's just the nature of them there's companies that just go around cleaning tanks i've got to clean three this year yeah, yeah. i have a question maybe oh, I'm sorry. yeah go ahead i just don't want to forget him mm -hmm. yeah. um and it might be threefold here um okay so have you had to outfit any tanks like you're going to have to do ours. If so, how long has it been? And thirdly, have you had any prolonged maintenance fees, repairs? What's your experience outfitting a tank like this? I have not <clears throat> personally done a tank like this. I'm not going to say that I have, but it has been done more than once. Okay. The the tank is is just a steel tank, which is why I like steel tanks. Is because you can weld on them. You can paint them; they last forever. You know, the other tank was when he was a boy. They just—they're still tanks, and as long as you keep a good paint job on them, they just last forever. So once you build this tank, you're—you're—you're you're, you're going to have the inside of it. You're going to have a bowl. 
just like the other tank down the street and it's just going to be that way instead of having air under your legs you're going to have the the old skin wrapped around it instead of it having four column legs you're going to just have a fluted column on the inside so it's going to be it's going to last as good as any other tank in other words it's just instead of having all of it exposed you're going to just have the inside room that you'll have to paint and that fluted that fluted stuff on the inside that's made out of steel same thing no, no rust no no, no decay well, no anything anything will ages and you do have to repaint it just like you paint your house but you still have access you know, but you do have access to it yeah. because the garage door mm -hmm. exactly okay. well I, I like to put in a garage door okay because it makes it easier because what happens is it makes it easier to build because they'll do a reinforced door and then then it is more it's easier to build okay yeah any other questions I don't know if I have any more. Uh, I believe you answered it as you continue to speak. Oh, okay. Is there any way you put have the water in the top and then put your floor in there for it to stay there? Can we have the bottom part fixed where we keep water that's not used in our water system for just for the fire department storage? It's not going to do any good. It's got a lot more efficient. So, so here's why it's important for the fire department to be in touch with him because he knows where I would encourage fire chiefs to be in close working relationships with him and I encourage that everywhere because in a fire event if you get a if, especially if you've got a volunteer fire fire crew that comes in if you've got a bunch of vol volunteers which I've been on them you, you rush to the scene you know a hydrant in this part of town you'll run over there and you'll start filling your truck up there and once you start you'll fight the whole fire from that one hydrant filling trucks up running back and forth well that that line may be a six inch line fed by another six inch line three miles away you know depending on maybe not three miles but a mile away right but if you go a block that way and go on the other other side it may be on an eight inch main and the capacity of this hydrant might be 900 gallons a minute versus 400 gallons a minute and so your fire fill time might be cut in half to fill that truck up just by instead of going to this street go to this street so you know we need to flush our hydrants every year to understand what's happening in our system to understand so fire protection is improved not necessarily by having water stored at store extra extraordinary amount of water stored fire protection is is improved by understanding what happens in the system to understand where i get good water where I can get two supplies. So if I have to have two trucks at the same time, if I pull this hydrant and go right over here and pull this one, they're pulling off the same six inch line, does you no good. Your, your flow in each tank just went down. You know, So having a working relationship with him to make sure he turns his pump on, if his pumps are on, the, fire, the flow out of that hydrant might be 900 gallons a minute. If they're off, it might be 650. Mm -hmm. Right? So, so fire protection, when we, we, is is improved but you know and when they're fighting the fire they're not coming to the tank to hook to it they're hooking to a hydrant so they're going to have a thousand feet of hose on the truck so they're going to you know that's a pretty good radius so they're going to try to find a hydrant and roll out hose to the house well if if the water's in that tank it's going to if, if that elevation is not helping you his pumps being on will will put water out that hydrant not the tank Right. So again, that relationship with him to make sure the pumps are on when the fire's on, that's what helps you with fire protection. Okay. Yeah. I just realized I asked three questions I didn't get an answer to, so I apologize no. again. No, that long no. Um when I said earlier when you had the good water as you call it the chlorinated water on yeah. the bottom half. Yeah. And we're only using the bottom half. Right. Then we're not getting the slug uh, of the, the, the slug of the bad water. Yeah. Right. So explain yeah. why you you're saying that we're getting a sludge effect. Slug. A slug. Whatever. Yeah. I, slug effect when the dechlorinated water is on top, but we're never using that. Mm -hmm. And since it's one and a half times heavier chlorine, yes. chlorinated water, it's staying at the bottom. So we're never going to be using that. So why are you saying you're well, you know, does a lake turn over? You know, in the fall and the spring, a deep lake turns over, right? 
it 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 flips. That's what happens in the tank. On How the often? You don't have any control over that. You don't know. That's the well, so that's the what risk. time of year usually does it? That is, you don't know. That's the risk part. And so the question is: is are you willing to risk? I've only Port. known the lake right. flipping over during the summertime, so it, it 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 depends on the depth of the lake, how many times a year, and that kind of thing. But you're right; it, at some point in the year, most lakes will flip over. Well, the point it, though is, is that you don't have any control over that. Just like we don't control when the lake turns, and there's a risk. And so, the, if the water's not doing you any good, and there's a risk, that's why people are turning towards trying to tidy up their their water storage in ways like this. Well, I know when a lake turns over, the, the water's not going up and down like it would be in um, a water container. So it's going to be constantly up and down. So I don't, I, I like to know the data, how often, if any, it actually flips over. I mean, I know you compare it to the lake, and I know a lake does. Right, right. But a lake is much deeper than a water tower. And there's not as much fluctuation. Well, it, it's, it's not about the depth of the lake. The, most people are aware of that. The same event happens in a column of water in the tower. It could happen more frequently here. It could happen many times a year. Uh, but it only takes once to have a problem. That's, that's, the, that's why people, people react by trying to correct it. It's because it really only, the reason you put the mixing system in originally was to try to keep that from happening. So well, do and we know it, it's, it's still occurring? It, it's still, you can look at the mode on the tank and know that it, it's not working. So essentially your proposal is increasing efficiency over excess water. So Correct. Okay. Because excess water, there's no benefit to the excess water. So a more efficient system over just added volume makes more sense. More efficient system will save you money in the long, long term. Right, um, and then it puts you in a situation. If electricity goes out. Does your station have a backup energy source? Yes. Okay. So, so look at it like this too. The last ice storm, you know, we I was out of my house for like seven days, right? Um, it took us about thirty hours to run out of water. Um, you know, you're looking at just a few more hours, e it, even if that water was helping you. You know, at best, a few more hours. You know, when you're looking at seven days. So, so, but then the problem is, you've pulled all that bad water into your system, and so you you don't want uh, somebody, an elderly person, particularly, that just you know, there's a risk there. It's a and it's a real risk. Um, it may not happen, but but it's a risk. So looking at doing this. Do what now? This have we got a bid on? From different companies having this project done we will advertise that and then what we'll do is we'll, we'll give the mayor the results of those bids you'll you'll open them here and then so you'll have that information and you'll have to go forward with that information and right. you are a representative of, of ewc engineering which is me and what um, and wet or dry which is jay hoffman and um, what we do is we do the engineering, the science of it, and so uh, I deal with the Division of Water. We do the engineering drawings. There's construction companies that do the work. You'll get your prices from them, and then that's the next step in, in, in looking at approving those prices. And do you benefit financially if you do this? Uh, it, Everybody's got to get paid, sir. It, it, I, I'm going to ask to get paid, but, but it, I, my... my uh, gain is not whether or not you do it. My, my gain is just advising you I would do it. I mean, like I said, we're tearing another standpipe down right now. Yeah. In favor of elevated storage. Um, it's got its place. I mean, there are situations where standpipes help. I mean, there's another one just down the street where I'm looking tearing this one down. The other one works perfect. It's, it's got a, it's got a, it's, it's just a pressure tank, feed a pump. And it, it pumps that direction, and it, so it works great. High turnover, a lot of water coming in and out of it. This is not that. This is a, a, a tried to be a, a two things when it and really for what this system needed was just one thing, which was elevated storage. It didn't need to be two things. And again, the the, the building extra fire protection, everybody that 
that's what everybody did there for a little bit. And everybody thinks, man, that's a great idea. We've had a bad incident. Now we know we've got stored water. But when the stored water is at low elevation, it doesn't help you. Uh, real quick, what's the rationale between like a third of this and not a half? Uh, it's based on the, the elevation of the okay. bottom of the other tank. Okay. And so the, the, the bottom is the bottom. So the bottom of your system, if you go look at the other tank, if you look at your elevated tank, you've got your riser pipe, which is the pipe coming up in the middle. The bottom of that bowl controls, controls your system, right? Okay. So then what we want to do is make the bottom of this new bottom that is going to be on the inside of that tank approximately that same elevation. So what we did was we came just a little bit below that so that this tank will control pressure of your system. So then the, the O tank, if you need to take it off and, and if you want to build a different tank or just take that one offline, you can. And we know that this tank will get water as far as you need to. So this tank will be the controlling tank. Okay. Right. Hydraulically. That's all I have. Any more questions? I appreciate the time. I got one. Yes, okay. Sir. So you're saying that the water, that the problem is not getting moved enough correctly? You don't use enough water to move enough. Yeah. He just said that they flush the system mm -hmm. what, quarterly? Quarterly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Would it not be feasible to flush it more often? Well, just, just to, to, to put the water there, you pumped it. Yes. And you've bought chlorine for it mm -hmm. and you've paid him to treat it yes. and you've done all those you've got all those expenses in it so that's a waste of money well i mean you know me right. being on the fire department you know we have to flush our hydrants ever you know you, so twice often, a year so, minimum yeah right. yeah but you know if, it, if it's going if it's going to save money to flush them more often to get that to get that water flipped mm -hmm. then maybe that's the cheaper way to go well you've got man hours and then then when you flush every time you flush how many water leaks, how many, how many hydrants you have? Uh, over a hundred something. Correct. So when you flush those, you flush them all in the spring, how many leaks you get? Uh, several. Right, so if you end up with five leaks. Well, we got all kinds of leaks anyway. Well, no, no, but, but in terms of what you're, you're contributing to. Yeah. So when you open a hydrant up, when you close that, there's, you know, you're going to have out of a hundred, you're going to have 10, 15 leaks. A leak to dig it up, you're going to have a backhoe out there, half a day, you're going to have a thousand dollars worth of material minimum. You have a pipe clamp, depending on the size of the pipe. Uh, eight inch pipe clamp, probably is what, $450? Yeah, around $450. You, you know, so with well, the time I mean, you can't back on time. Now you're throwing this out there, but you know, that's not going to be every time. I mean, you know, you're not going to use all this money, you know. Well, well I, I am throwing it. it. I'm, I'm throwing it out there to demonstrate, though, that every year you have expenses, mm -hmm. right? that this is contributing to. Mm -hmm. And whenever whenever right. you throw all this money into this tank, then you're going to come up with some other kind of, of an issue that you didn't find or just like with the mixing deal. You know, you know, so Well but but one thing about it though is we've been building elevated storage tanks for a generation. Mm -hmm. Elevated storage still work. That's the one thing that we know works. Right? That's the one thing that's safe. It's 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 above your minimum elevation. It's a steel tank. It's paintable. Usually, when you put a steel tank up at elevation, it's fixed long term. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's a known fact. That's why when you drive down the road, most of the tanks you see are elevated steel tanks. And that's so that's what you're trying to make this. Well, right? I'm kind of on the same wavelength as the other two gentlemen. You know, we've already got three hundred thousand dollars into the tank now uh, from the. 2019 or whenever it was. Now we're going to put 600 in, and maybe in another three years we're going to have to do another $300,000. You know, we don't know. Just like we didn't know in 2019 that we're going to have to do something else. Uh, I get that, uh, but to, to cost-wise, it seems uh, <coughs> I don't think I think what two gentlemen are saying, uh, and me too, I think it's cheaper to fix the leak. At whenever a leak arises, then spend in Harford's the money out of Harford's account for six hundred thousand dollars. Whenever it's not a guarantee that it's going to last in, in three three more years, we're going to have to do another three hundred thousand dollars. You know, the, the three hundred thousand was for just routine maintenance. You got to do it every twenty years. Yeah. I mean, that was just that's but sixty eight thousand of that was for that mixer. Pardon. The, there was sixty-eight thousand 
that was on top of that for that mixer yeah. that was involved. But in that, that was an attempt to try to solve some of this problem he's talking about. Was trying well, do to we know what the do we know what our cost was on fixing the leaks? Say last year. Yes. I mean that, that that's what I wanted to ask. Well, so 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 that's what I was trying to get to. So so a couple different things. When you're talking about a three hundred thousand dollar project, yeah, if if seventy thousand dollars is for the mixing system, so we're not talking about a three hundred thousand dollar mixing system. Painting the tank is part of maintaining right. the tank. It's like changing the oil in your car. Yeah, you're going to have painting to, the new tank that you put in, right? Yeah, yeah. So well, painting the, the tank. Now is already painted. Painting the tank is something that you're going to have to do anyway, right? I'm not talking about painting the tank. I'm talking about the structural repair to the tank is different than that. The structural repair to the tank prevents the leaks, theoretically, because you don't have to flush as much. You don't have to do that. If you're going to fix a leak, what I was trying to get at is when you're getting into a leak, you're looking at somewhere between $5,000 and, and $7,500 a leak. Because usually when you totalize rock, you got to have two, lo two loads of rock, you know, uh, two triaxial loads, depending on how bad the hole, how deep the hole is. You know, it could be any, any. you know, you got to go back and fix the pavement if it's in the road. Um, that, that's two trips out there, right? When That stuff adds up. And so every one of those you prevent, you save that much money. So it's, it, it, it makes much more intellectual uh, use of your money by not, incurring this, by not incurring those expenses. Because every leak you fix, then you've got another issue down the road, right? Um, it's it's a pipe clamp on a on a main line that has that has potential. For but again, it. we're still going to have those leaks. You know, we're still going. We got leaks all over the place. That's a pipe. We right. done spent six hundred thousand dollars on a tank. Right. Plus, we got all these leaks that we want to fix anyway. Correct, but you don't have more leaks that you have to fix. So now, if you get those leaks fixed, you got a chance to get them done, and you're done. You, you're caught up. Hey, I, right? don't, I don't think that's a guarantee, though. No, no, no. Well, I mean, you're always going to have leaks because you've got a water system. Is there a way that we can get a, a cost analysis for each year to repair those uh, situations you were talking about <clears throat> in the, the past five years? Get an average cost of that, okay? And compare to how many years of maintenance we would have to do versus uh, dividing it into $600,000. See how many years that would be. Because if we could take $600,000 and we're spending you know, $10,000 a year on maintenance, then we could take that $600,000, put it in an investment, and the interest rates that comes from that would pay for that ten thousand dollars a year. So, so, so here's another that, problem. Here's, here's get several grants for these water lines. Well, that's, 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 say, say this. Here's another problem you got to look at. The and and this is this is true. We look at things on our scale. How long's Hartford been here? When was Hartford founded? 1808. That's exactly right. You're you're looking at a long time. Two hundred years. It's not been here twenty years. So when we oftentimes we look at things. You know, I've got a water line across Harrington Lake that's been there since 1890, <clears throat> and it's not had any work done to it, right? And, and it's had, at one time, it was raw water coming from the lake. First, it was finished water coming from the lake. Then it was raw water coming from the lake. Then it was finished water going back to Gary County, right? Like, so, you, you the, oh, it, the scale of that improvement, so the, once you get your tank fixed, how, you know, the tank on the top of the hill is 50 years. So how many leaks do you save over a 50-year period or how many, you know what I mean? It's, it's the, the scale of it, it, there's payback because it's the length of time that it's, it's permanent and you don't have to worry about the water quality. And then after that, then his time is spent fixing leaks, which saves you more money because once you get your leaks fixed, if it can get, up, get caught up, once you get your leaks fixed, then you don't have those treatment expenses. You're not buying chlorine. You're not buying the chemicals necessary to treat the, the water. You're not running your pumps as long. Right, so the benefit is saved by running an efficient system, not just trying to patch through the next four years. I have right? to assume, which is what we do. I have uh, to assume every time that we expose our lines to fix a leak, we're also weakening the integrity of our water system. You are. Yeah. Okay. Did, did we not just buy a system that can identify leaks? Detect leaks. Uh, yes, a leak load tank. Yeah, didn't we just buy that? Yes. You do, and, and, and that's exactly what I'm talking about. You want to have that, you want to use it every day. Right. If you're fixing unnecessary leaks because we've had to flush more, which is what, I mean, it, 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 it's, it's, you know, you nickel and dime yourself in, in, in times 
when you do it like that. I mean, and that, that's kind of what happens. I mean, I, that's not the right word. What what is it when you you know you know what I mean? You you, you just cut yourself short. You cut your nose off and spy your face. I mean, you can say any way any way you want to. I mean, that's what happens. Um, and it's it's trickle effect over time. You know, the it the, the water system is going to be here way longer than me. You know, and way longer than you know all of us. And so, like, what you got to do is try to put it in a situation where it's sustainable, and and where you mitigate your risk, right? And so, it's not a four hundred thousand dollar decision in the next two years or the next five years. It's for the next forty years and fifty years, right? Because the tank was built in what 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 year was the tank built? Mayor, do you remember? Mm -mm. I don't remember. And the guy that come in here with the uh, with the mixing system said the exact same thing. You're looking at this for the next 40 years. And 50 years I would and never have advised that. Yeah, I would have never told you that. You know, know what I mean? Like it's, I just, it's, a, it's a, you know. It's I, I've never seen those types of mechanical <coughs> mixing system like that. I've never seen one. See, I mean, because we make water in my plant where I work. I mean, you know. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, you know, we, we make water and mix water all the time. So, right. uh, you know, I think there's a more logical explanation to try to to mix this water and get it right rather than just spending six hundred thousand dollars. That's just my opinion. But uh, you know, I mean, I'm I, gonna, I think there might be a. I'm gonna go ahead and let him go on. And I'll give you his number anytime you got any questions, <laughs> any additional questions that you want to ask. He's got miles to travel to get back home tonight. So I believe this gentleman. I, I had a question, uh, but the gentleman answered it as he continued to speak. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Okay, yes, sir. Well, I appreciate your time, man. Yeah, I, I mean, I, these I, are I, these are all loaded questions that everybody right here on this table you are, are not aware, and yeah. we're only as good as our water people, our fire people, code enforcement, police departments. We're only as good as they tell us because we don't know these things. So I appreciate you explaining what you're doing. I totally get that, and, and it's a just one of those things that's a big decision and I totally acknowledge that. How long would a project like this take and how would it affect water usage while it's happening? It would be done fairly quick in terms of you know through the summer okay. you know like you're looking at less than six months. Okay and I guess that was another question. <laughs> if that did happen would we have to go on the county system? No, or we can no? actually run off the small town. We went over when they painted that tank, they had to strip up, they had to drain it all out, strip down, paint it thin, and we were able to run off the small tank. All right. We just had to run longer hours at the plant. Right. Yeah, and, and I'm talking about the fire system. I, I'm not saying that you don't know or that you don't talk to it. You know what I mean? I, just, but, but for the average citizen, they don't realize how much you have to know in order to be able to fight a fire and how much background information you have to be aware of. To fight a fire, they just the average person just doesn't realize that. You, you, you know what I mean. So I'm, I'm trying to break it down a little bit. What, is our hydrants on different size lines? Do yes. we have? Yes. So is there any way other than like is there any marking to know what size line there is? Like a maybe it's an eight inch line, we paint some of it yellow, or <coughs> some kind of. Well, we currently don't have no way to mark. We don't have a mark that no. Thanks, Arvin. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, you very you. much for your time. None of us are engineers. We just sorry, I thought this oh, might yeah. have to answer some questions. I yeah, that's why I have to. Yes, answer. sir. I'm going to have a question kind of unrelated to anything going on this evening. Uh, my name is Casey Banks, and I live at 333 Massey Lane. And I just wanted to know, as far as uh, your residents here in Ohio County, where are they directed to go in emergency situations? Like, it was my understanding that we were going to have below freezing temperatures for the next few days in the forecast. And <clears throat> I have been partnering with HHERL, Healthy at Home Eviction Relief Program. Uh, I guess I made a mistake on my application somewhere along the way, but I contacted Kennedy uh, there in Davis County to let them know that, you know, oh gosh, uh, I, I lost my phone, I lost my wallet, I didn't receive any paperwork from you guys in the mail saying that there was a broken arrangement or anything like that to make me aware 
that you all were going to come and try to cut this power off, right? <coughs> even though there was a, a, already a contract in place. Um, so I made myself, you know, made it to the library and made phone calls to let them know that I thought I'd made a mistake and that, you know, I had myself and my dog out there at the home. Uh, I've been trying to do repairs on it. I've come to a point to where I think I've got a fire hazard out there at the residence. I don't know exactly what to do or where to go, but, you know, right now I don't have the power. Uh, these guys have, you know, like, you've got your office, it's closed every day, Ottoman area yeah. or whatever it is, right, where they give you assistance. Okay. That place is closed every day at noon. Every day at noon, that office is closed. So what's been going on is I have the guy that's been my landlord. He has partnered with this Healthy at Home Eviction Relief Program. He's rented this residence with the aforementioned knowledge of open and exposed wire that prevents a fire hazard at the residence. He's uh, also, right, known of uh, mold on the underside of that home, standing that damn thick, and it's been rented to myself over six months. And now, Bud, I mean, I've come back to this town with information regarding the death of Corbin Asher Henry in Davis County. Uh, <clears throat> the investigation into that murder seemed like it took over a year, right? Now, I have information that, in my honest opinion, buddy, when I think about my friend Amy Rafferty, that works at Auburn Area Head Start, I go and I pass by that building, just walking by it, and there's an eye in the sky on the corner of that building. Not to mention, Davis County has a maintenance shed with gated entry for their police vehicles, for the city buses that run around the city. That gated entrance also has surveillance videos for surveillance cameras, right? Where my stepson was shot, buddy, was right across the damn street from where they had two lies in the sky. And that investigation went on for over a year. And Bud, I mean, I don't like what would you like what would you like the city council to do? I'm just I want to know where I go when I need help. Okay. You know? If I may speak for just a minute, because you seem very stressed. So what I'm 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 hearing it, okay? And that's kind of what I did for She's a living. Specializing in that. So <laughs> I, I kind of right, like, so. guys, I'm, okay. I'm just here to say. Okay. I'm trying to get myself back into the sure. workforce. I go back to work on sure. Monday morning at McDonald's, and I don't even like. I'm not a sorry person. I would get out here and help you guys clean up whatever you need to clean up, whatever I could do. But, uh, well, man, and we appreciate that. So I don't even know where to go okay. for the okay. evening with my dog to spread out my okay. car or to get a hot meal. We're city limits, so there's only so much we can handle. But listen, there out of an area, yeah, they surely close. Have you been down here at the community center, or I, that's okay. what I'm saying. Being a resident, okay. being here, they're all. Years. And I can, I'll I get you some numbers before you leave. Okay. Without a phone, yeah, posting out. I don't know where to go. How to call? Gotcha. Posting out. Uh, I'll be. I'll have to have some resources. You see what I'm saying? So, like, okay. you know, all I'm trying to say is that when I walk out the door, I've got my dog in my car. Okay. And we Unfortunately, don't know, we don't know where we're going. How we're oh, my family does not have a homeless shelter. We have some resources. With your landlord situation, I would suggest yeah, I just, right, contacting. Right, right. I, I would know. like to report that, man. Okay, it's, the Kentucky Housing Corporation. I'm going to get you the number for that yeah. because they, you know, you have certain things, and you're obviously under stress, and we feel that. So let me write down. Just, I'll research real quick while we're finishing our meeting. I'll write you down this some important phone numbers. That's okay, that's okay. But there's only so much sure within our control within the city limits. Uh, any other visitors wish to speak tonight about anything? Okay, Cliff. Uh, I'm not here to complain. I, I made some observations and I'm going to ask you to consider some uh, suggestions. If you will. I live on Render Street. Render is one of the two <coughs> streets that cut through from 231 to Clay and they both get a lot of traffic. Mm -hmm. There are some drainage problems on Render Street. It's causing the street to decay and get potholes and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, from Madison Street, which is on the ridge there, down to Clay, which is headed northeast, I guess. 
there is no drainage at all on either side that's effective. There's a berm, like the street level is here, and then there's a berm four to six inches mm -hmm. high on both sides of the street. So when it rains, everything that comes off of Madison just comes straight down the street. Um, presents a lot of problems. It, it causes puddling. It causes all kinds of traffic issues. And you go out there right now, and I've got pictures on my phone. It's, it's causing the street to decay. Uh, there's a leak in a neighbor's yard across from my house. It's been there about five, six months now. And there's potholes starting to come up in the street right there. And I'm afraid it's going to cost the city a lot more money to, to repay the street than it is to fix the leak. And then down at the as you go from Madison down to down the hill up to Old Main, there's a drainage problem there. Every time it rains, there's a pool of water that goes all the way across the street. And it's pretty deep. Uh, you, one guy can fix it with a shovel in about 15 minutes. So I'm gonna, I just wanted to highlight that, uh, uh, the observations, and ask you guys to take that under advice. If, uh, if you'll just contact uh, the office in the morning, and they'll fix out a work order for everything that you've Okay. Mentioned there. They right. can just call the city office? Yeah. All right. I'll do that. Okay. Thank you all very much. All right. Thank you. You got a, you got a hard enough job to do. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? I can give the code enforcement report if you guys want to. Know. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, so uh, just for the month of February, it's been kind of, it's kind of, kind of slow. There's been some, uh, some properties with, uh, I want to say probably remodel some uh, debris. Uh, so they've all got a warnings and they're, it's time for them to get their, their second warning uh, uh, citation, first citation. Uh, but I, I want, uh, there is a couple carryovers, three carryovers from January that uh, the residents has got their final notices. And that final notice means that uh, we went through the warning process, went through the citation process, and they still haven't correct the deficiency. Uh, one of them is a, a residence down on, uh, on Barn Street. Uh, back in the summer, uh, this same resident, he, he actually come in and paid his fine, but he never did correct the violation. Uh, I know it's winter time, and you can drive down Barn Street and you can tell which one it is. Uh, it's just an unkept yard, overgrown, still overgrown, you know, and even though it's wintertime, uh, it's, it's still, the whole neighborhood is uh, uh, pretty much, it, it's a sore eye for the whole neighborhood. Uh, the second one is an, an empty house on Render Street. Uh, same thing there. Uh, that it's vacant, I mail it to the uh, owner that's in the PBA office. Uh, same thing, it's an overgrown lot, empty house. Uh, it's pretty bad too and then the, the third is on uh, it's a vacant lot on walker street uh it's overgrown uh, back in the summer a, a couple of these uh people said they had COVID, so i kind of laid off you know great period there with COVID and stuff like that but still they never did took, took a action to clean up their residence so they got their final notice uh, so i guess probably moving forward are we going to the question is, are we going to send the city workers to correct those deficiencies and yep. put a lien on our property? Yep. Uh, I, I know that's the process and the steps, but just to bring you guys aware of that. We got all that trash over here on... on yep, on, on Mulberry yeah. in uh, Buffalo Lane there. Yeah. Uh, did, did they come in and schedule that? They never did? No, we're putting a lien on the property. Nice, okay. Well, I know... Uh, that's what we'll have to do with these others. Yeah. Well, I, I know the, the lady, whenever I finally was able to talk to her, she told me she didn't have water service, so I knew she didn't have, you know, trash pickup either. Uh, she told me that there was a like an $800 bill on that property. So that was, that was another question since you brought that up. Do we just, going forward or, or in our history, if there is a lien, like an $800 overdue bill, do we just leave that bill is there any way we're going to, we going to talk to the attorney about that? Why don't you uh, call my office and set up a time and sit down and meet with me one day? Because I think we have some other things to go over to. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. All right. I think I can probably answer some stuff for you. Okay. Sounds okay. good. All right. Hey, um, yes. I'm all over the place right now. Um, penalties. You got it? Oh. 
Um, is there any way that we can stiffen the penalties up on uh, code enforcement? Yeah. Got it. Well, the recommendation is not to get too extreme because then they could get knocked down if a, um, by judicial oversight. But to uh, you could go up some, but you'd have to pass a new ordinance. Because what is it now? Twenty. If it varies, uh, different different. Uh, I here. You're just talking about the initial citations, but yeah. if we have to go in and clean it up, it's pretty drastic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so it gets pretty stiff. Most most of our violations are for garbage and overgrown weeds. Uh, so the garbage first offense is 10, second's 50, and the third's 75, and then the grass and weeds is 10, 25, and 50. So I know that there, we've had some residents that come in and pay their fine, but not everybody pays their fine. And I think probably the the overall goal is to get the property cleaned up. You know, and if it takes the three, you know, violations, citations, or whatever, and they finally move on it, uh, I'm pretty happy that they cleaned it up, finally cleaned it up. If the, the council would like, I can go ahead and pursue them, pay them their fine. Uh, it's well, to me, you sometimes what I see in the long run of the code enforcement Let's just say if you gave me a citation, I'm just going to pay the twenty-five dollars and wait for another one to come in. Yeah, yeah that next one's going to be and fifty or seventy. I mean, it's progressive. It, it is. It gets progressive. So, yeah. and, it, and that's what happened with the uh, Barnes Street yeah. residence. He he paid his fine last year, but never cleaned up. There was yeah. one over there by the Chin's residence that was somebody yeah. called yeah. me about. Yeah, he called yeah. Me. And, I, then, I went. and then what's that street by Diane Lee? Oh, that's Mulberry. It's Mulberry. And then I, yeah, I got so, several on that. So, like, yeah, oh. so that gentleman, when, which is the one that the mayor put me on to, which I've dealt with him <laughs> ever since I've been in, in this position. And he, he's not a very friendly Kudos friend. to you, Jeff. Uh, you know, uh, every time I go there, I'm, yeah. I'm prepared for yeah. cussing. You know, I get that. Uh, but majority of his neighbors do call me and com complain about, about him. Uh, so this gentleman, a little history about the gentleman, uh, his sister is the overseer of his property. And so the notices and everything has not been working with him. So this past round, I've been sending stuff to his sister. Uh, she lives in Crown Point, Indiana. Uh, I don't know, uh, last time I sent stuff to his sister, uh, he came into the office and he, Kind of, you know, wasn't very friendly with the, the ladies here in the office. Uh, but he cleaned up a little bit then, but he's back out of, he's out of control again. And it, I think he's just a, he's a collector, a hoarder. I don't know how you, you guys want to describe him, but uh, he does that. Uh, but, uh, so yeah, I am working with uh, the ones on, on Mulberry. But I'll, I'll, I'll yeah, just call my staff yeah. and they'll set you up. We got some free moments. Okay. I think there's a lot that we can both. Okay. Through. All right. Thanks, Jeff. All right. No problem. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next on the agenda is take a look at our minutes and approve or adjust them. Uh, take a look at those. Whenever you're done, I'll entertain a motion to adopt those. Second. Uh, second. Okay. Motion. Uh, any questions, comments, anything? All in favor, uplift your hand. Okay, thank you. Who seconded that? Pick one. Stay yeah, sure. You had them on the floor. You got a second and a third. So. <laughs> uh, Lisa's out, so I got to take the minutes, too. <laughs> Let me know how that works out for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's well, being recorded. So. <laughs> Who's second in? Stay short or Derek. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> All right, take a look at the finances. Do you vote on that right there by voting for it? Okay. Any questions or comments about the financials? No. Make the motion. All right. I would like to ask, though, um, just so I'm more familiar, when when they're putting these in the computer, mm -hmm. could you see if they could add, put it detailed, like if it was for the water, please? Because I'm not gathering. It's just all over the place. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like what department is what? Because uh, I'm well just like, seeing it all as a whole like picture. Uh, Atmos Energy yeah. would be. Yeah, uh, that's all I want to know is what department is, even if they go to Walmart or whatever. I just, I just like to know. Okay. Um, see, like this one right here, this Atmos Energy right here is for for the fire department. You know? Right. I've seen some of those, but. Yeah. Um, Right. Each one. Huh? Here, where, like, it'll say, like, GF is General Fund, PD is Police Department, FD is Fire Department. Are you looking at those? Yes, but there's one. I guess maybe the general was the one that I was. Are you looking at the check register? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, yeah, you can you can compare it back to those income statements. Yeah, uh, general includes both maintenance and police department. And okay. A lot of those things, uh, like here's O'Reilly uh, Automotive Stores, so that's going to be, it's in their general fund, that's going to be the maintenance department. Okay. We did that. Fisher Auto Parts is maintenance. Uh, Imco, that's maintenance. So basically, you know, I just, just need to look at that first sheet and not even worry about the. Like CH and City Hall. And not even worry about the other. Okay. Like All right, gotcha. Gotcha. Never mind. Okay, is there a second? <laughs> Tony, all right. Any questions about it? All in favor? All right, thank you. The motion's carried. Uh, brings us to talking about the water tank. I know last time there was some question about have we ever requested bids on it. And there's, I've got the council minutes here, but back in February last year, one meeting uh, they voted to engage Earl to do the plans and then I think it's the next meeting that uh, Jerry made a motion to uh, accept bids on the project so that's what stage we're in now if we're ready to accept bids but I believe you on that it's there but it just because we are accepting bids doesn't mean we have to follow through. No, you don't with have to accept these process. bids once they come in. You're just advertising. Right. Okay. We can do that then. Do what now? We can accept the bids. Go I'd bid. like you can accept or reject, you know, yeah. whatever right. bids you want. I would like to at least get you a the couple is? of bids on it. I mean, I, do what? I'd like to get a couple of bids. Different well, there's bids. only two companies, I think, that. Do this kind of work, you know. He'll contact both of them. And yeah, I like to see what it costs. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess just wait to see if the bids come in That's for the next do. meeting. You know, you can't table it for you the can't next make meeting. Until you well, know you'll what need the to make a motion. Yeah, What the cost is going to be? I'll make a motion that we. Except the bids. We've already got the motion. Okay. <laughs> that was back February last year or something like that. Okay. So if we submitted, we need to advertise for bids at this yes. point? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Any motions need to be made for that? Mm -hmm. to he's already He's already done it. It's in the minutes. Good job, yeah. Jerry. Yeah, I'm ahead of y'all. I'm just waiting for y'all to catch it. So, you also, so, you all, so you've already authorized to advertise for bids? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we now just haven't done that. Did this man get he'll, he'll go ahead and he'll go through the bidding process and I think he'll probably allow, uh, he'll start, I'm trying to think, uh, early in March he'll advertise, uh, we'll have about two weeks of 
accepting bids, and then he'll bring them to our Is this it meeting. Here? So there's no actual action requirement right now. Is that the minutes? No, they're right here. So did have we paid this gentleman? We paid him some. What did we pay? Did we agree on that? Yeah. When you when you said to engage him, you agreed okay. to pay us. <laughs> I want to see this. Oh, uh, right here. While he's going over that, mm -hmm. did you get your signatures from everybody? Uh, I got one from uh, Ms. What's her Burton. name? It was on the back side. Okay, and then the, the, the did bench. I it, give it to you? I, don't I know, thought you that paper down there. I don't know what day tomorrow is. Are you, uh, yeah. I know Natalie said we had something, and I said take that to City Hall. So I guess maybe you did. I got it from this lady right here. Okay. I think I got the other, but These do we have the signatures anywhere? Huh? Do we have? Yeah. Uh, she normally attaches it. That's why I was curious. Oh. Attached. No. Okay. I thought, she, I thought I took it down to you. Yeah, Once I know. I got that and I thought I sent it back. Okay. That's what I'm asking. Well, she's probably got it in okay. the office. We just need to double check. Yeah. Okay. And then the other one's right here. Uh, so this was on the previous council? Yeah. Here's right there. Oh, I did. <laughs> okay, so here it is. Motion was made by Jerry Now here's one for Right, the motion yeah. made is like bids for revamping one million gallon RT. So I guess my question, that's all there, but where does it say that why did why we already pay him, I guess? When you engage him? Yeah. I mean, did we have a price on that during this 2019 meeting? I don't know what it was going to cost to do it. No. No. For his work doing that. No. For what he's going to charge us? Yeah. No. In the bid, usually engineering fees and whatnot are kind of built in sometimes. So how much have we paid him so far, then? Hmm. I can't remember right off the bat. Um, was it about four? Uh, about sixteen. I think it was about sixteen thousand or something like that. And so, that was during the, this meeting here that that was approved. Mm -hmm. the, the previous meeting over here for approved. For the money, though. Well, we don't know how much it's going to cost until he gets done with all the project. Okay. It's just part of the overall cost of, of doing the project, okay. you know, whatever the engineering cost is. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, the, under new business here, we've got the first reading for ordinance 202201, closing this unnamed alley. You've got a diagram, or you've got a full explanation about the ordinance right there. The diagram probably is the best thing. It, it's between Smith Street and Thomas Street. Part of that was already closed. We closed it in a meeting because it was a tree growing up in the alley. We were gonna have to take it out. We just said we would close the alley and let the owners on both sides worry about the tree. And then we're closing the rest of the alley, the darkened part right there. It's. Uh, runs parallel to Clay Street. It's the first alley beyond the left as you go up Thomas Street there. I mean, <coughs> there's trees growing up in the middle of it. It's not anything. It was back when they yeah, hauled coal and ice and things like that. You know, that's what that middle line, middle alley is right there going up through there. It's, you can't tell there's an alley there. You know, people... I didn't know it was there. <laughs> you know. 
We have several of them. There's a bunch the of them like that throughout town. And, you know, people are maintaining it. We don't maintain it. We don't use it. We don't have any use for it. So anyway, it's just closing that part of the alley. Half will go to the owners on one side and half will go to the owner on the other side. So, so you need a motion to close it? Yeah. Well, we'll we just no, you can't. No. no. Got to read it. You got to read it. Oh, okay. Just go, go ahead and read the, the title up there. I'll go. Okay. City of Hartford, Kentucky, Ordinance Number 22-01, an ordinance to close the remaining portion of an unnamed alley between located between Smith Street and Thomas Street. Okay, that's first reading. I will have a second reading next month. All right. Um, I was approached by a member of the Masonic Lodge. They wondered if they could put up signs at the entrances to town saying the Masonic Lodge meets here. It's a 30-inch circle mounted on a pole. Underneath it's a little rectangular saying what time what day the time they meet so they just wanted permission to put that out i said i'll just have to take it to the council and whatever we all decide to do i'll make the motion to allow them to do it yes sir okay yeah. on that line what happened to the veteran sign that used to be out here by 69 and oakwood drive for the veteran um meeting we it down. you got what we have blowed it down Really? I seen it laying down. Oh, is it there. down there? I go and pick it up, put it back in there. Because I went down there. You know, I do volunteer work yeah. for the city, so I went down and picked it up. I think it's down at the shop. Okay. Well, that and then we used to have another sign about someone from Hartford. I can't yeah, think of it. Yeah, I think that one got taken down. Not that one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know which one you're talking about. But there was a taller one, like an athletic, like a athletic person. Oh, Johnny Oldham? Yes. Along with Johnny Oldham? Yes. Hmm. All those got taken down all at once. I don't, yeah. yeah I don't know where that and they haven't been back in a long time. It's probably not a maintenance garage. I'm coming into some money, Me too. so <laughs> I'm in a small position. Uh, they're, I'm sure they're down to maintenance garage. Don't know what condition they're in, you know, to <sighs> put back up. Okay. Uh, got a motion and second. Any discussion regarding Masonic Lodge's request. All in favor? Clifted hand. Okay, carry. I will note, George, you might need to check with planning and zoning. They may have to get a permit. Do what now? They may need to get a sign permit from planning and zoning. They may want to check. Yeah. What'd you say? A planning and zoning permit for a sign. Yeah. I couldn't hear you. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I turn around when y'all catches COVID. <coughs> okay. That's the last thing on the agenda. Anybody have anything that you want to bring up? Make a motion. Oh. Uh, it was brought up to my attention yes. <laughs> about our employees on the I can't even call the name of it now. <laughs> About them on uh, payroll. They, you know, I think they're getting 2%. Does this need to be a closed session issue if we're talking Probably. personnel stuff? Yeah. Yeah. But that's what I was. Okay. So this. You want to make a motion to go in closed session? Yes, sir. I'll make okay. a motion. Okay. And second? Second. All right. All in favor? Okay, thank you.